So as we know, uh, and again, we're welcoming you back again. IEEE Consumer Electronics um, Magazine is uh, honored today to talk again about uh, energy harvesting uh, and related uh, topics. Uh, I'm really honored to have uh, Dr. Takahashi uh, here with me today. Uh, and Dr. Takahashi has an incredible new product. Um, and it is uh, an energy harvesting related product. And Dr. Takahashi, um, before we get into your product, um, you were telling me earlier about mm -hmm. a little bit about your life. Mm -hmm. You told me that you're from Totsuka, Japan. Yes, I which am. Is, which is very interesting because mm -hmm. I lived there many years ago mm -hmm. around the same time. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of your process of how you went um, and, and one, you know, it's, it's very uncommon, I think, for a, a, you know, a young Japanese girl to go on this path and become a PhD mm -hmm. at Berkeley. If you could just tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, when, since I was a kid, I always had my passion in science and technology. So uh, naturally, I majored in physics as a college student. And then um, after actually I did my master's in solid state physics, I did uh, consulting. I did a management consulting for McKinsey for five years in the, for their Tokyo office. But still, nice, my passion was still in technologies. I did lots of you know, technology companies for my clients. And then I realized uh, what I really want to do is to you know, get into you know, startups, entrepreneurship. And then, of course, you know, Silicon Valley is the place to be. So um, I decided to um, get back to school and then do a PhD in one of the school in, in California. And then luckily I got into UC Berkeley for uh, MEMS research. Wow. So yeah, so I was really excited. So I quit my, you know, six figure job <laughs> and became a six, you know, I mean, I became a, became a graduate student at UC Berkeley again. So, so you went from six figures down to no figures. No figures. <laughs> well, you know, they still pay, you know, at the, you know, the engineering schools. But, you know, yeah, so, but, you know, I was really happy that I was be in the middle of the innovation. So I was really excited to move over to Berkeley. So I did. And then I got into this research in um, MEMS Rotary uh, small stepper motor for um, kind of MEMS Rotary engine project. So you know, by basically my research was around wireless sensors and you know, and then also these small scale electromagnetic systems. And then you know, as I was approaching to graduation, I came up with this idea of you know using you know small scale energy harvesting with some electromagnetic you know, induction systems. So I thought, oh, that may work. That can you know that can be something. And then so I started. I uh, applied to uh, NSF and some other SBIRs. And then uh, actually, I didn't get it first time, <laughs> but the second time I did actually get a uh, SBI grant for this energy harvesting st study. So, yeah, th th that's how the, the company started. So I think that's I guess that's a lesson learned is, is just because you apply for NSF grant mm -hmm. and you don't get it. Mm -hmm. I think there's a word in Japanese. What is it? Gaman. So yeah, to, like to, a persistence, to push, to just be to persistent, go for it. Push through it yeah. yeah. So I guess that I guess what we could our viewers could could see is that being persistent mm -hmm. uh, for something you're really passionate about can mm -hmm. can, can make it a yeah. big difference. Yeah, and also actually we want some. Uh, so you know everybody you know starting trying to start a company at those schools try to apply to those you know business plan competitions to get some little you, know, you know allowance and then get some notice. So actually we did did that and then we actually won some prizes. And then we won some uh, prize from uh, Rice Business Plan Competition, and also um, we won uh, uh, what it's called Venture Lab Prize at the UC Berkeley. Wow. So uh, they gave us a little bit of money and also uh, free office space on campus for one year. Wow. So I just thought, you know, why not just you know just to try to do make the most out of this opportunity, just to see what I can do. And if it goes nowhere, I can always get a job. So, sure. so why not give it a shot? So I did, and then you know, then you know, I just ended up, you know, getting the grant. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, your company name is called again. Eco Harvester. Eco Harvester, mm -hmm. and I think the great thing about uh, the concept of eco harvesting, at least generally in energy mm -hmm. harvesting mm -hmm. itself, is that uh, energy harvesting allows us to. Uh, reuse power or create power or use uh, power in a way that's almost infinite so we're not throwing batteries away and causing more waste 
and it's making it easy to use. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the Eco Harvester? So uh, what yeah. we do is this uh, energy harvest thing, um, basically using uh, induction to uh, and using people's motions or vibration, then using you know converting that kinetic energy to electric energy to for you know wireless systems. Mm -hmm. Great. Now the interesting thing is we also have uh, Stuart. And Stuart, what was your last name again? Carl. Carl. Mm -hmm. Stuart Carl here. And Stuart is uh, the lead, one of the lead engineers, yep. developer, mm -hmm. hardware engineers on the project. And I was speaking to uh, Stuart earlier about his role um, in, the, uh, in the project. And I think what you told me was that when you were hired on some time ago, uh, the, uh, Dr. Takahashi had, a, had a, a workable, great design, but it was kind of bulky. Yep. And you were able to do some magic to make it where it is. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, well, I'm a, I have a, a master's degree in product design from Stanford, and um, these guys were from, from Cal, and uh, they <laughs> lost the big game that year. So I felt sorry for them and decided to help them out with their project. Um, at that time, it was pretty large and bulky, and we needed to make it much, more, much smaller, much more efficient, and much more manufacturable. And um, it was actually a very interesting project because so much of Silicon Valley is solid state electronics. It was very interesting to work on something that is so challenging from a mechanical engineering point of view. It was also very satisfying to work with two of Dr. Takahashi's fellow students and colleagues uh, who are both uh, PhD mechanical engineers on the project. Now, now, so you have a master's, mm -hmm. working with two PhDs, so we're, t we're saying the master's, but you're, you have a master's with a whole lot of real world experience. Yeah. So you were, I'm, I'm guessing here, were we were able to help educate the PhDs and... Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> we, it's more like our different uh, skill sets meshed perfectly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Well, that's good. Good political response. I forgot, yeah. I, forgot, I forgot your boss is to the right of me. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get over. A, a, I have to be very a careful. bottle of water and chat more about that. Well, that's really good. Now, uh, on the product, can you show us a demo right now? Uh, so yeah, but we don't have the receiver site. But what we uh, what what we used for uh, this the, this uh, one of the application we developed is this uh, light switch self generating the power with this clicking motion. So this just one click um, creates pretty much about um, one millijoule of power that's enough to send the signals to the receiving unit that controls the light. So what user, you know, what end users get is that you don't need to wire your light switches and you don't need to have any batteries in your remote controls because it's your motion itself. It generates enough power for for to, con to control the system. So one millijoule. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, some of our non-physicists out there, this is it, it probably gets at what a, a five volt level or a ten volt level? Uh, about like two volts, like something. Two volt yeah, level yeah. and and maybe we're we're so maximum we're, five volts mm -hmm. AC, mm -hmm. but then our signal tapers down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it gives us how many milliamps? You think? Um, well, what we're really looking at is the amount of energy. Sure. And we're about five hundred to a thousand. Microjoules. Okay, so I should be able to do the equation in my head, I'm trying to think of think about how much yeah. current that is. Uh, I guess the basic question is, um, uh, it's it's enough energy um, to, to power a packet a, or two, yeah. pattern of it, and you're mm -hmm. using Zigbee inside. Mm -hmm. Can you disclose which Zigbee you're using? Uh, it's actually the uh, TI. It's simplest. It's the Zigbee radio frequency. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's enough power yeah. to, mm -hmm. to power up that. Uh, little radio mm -hmm. and transmit out mm -hmm. a packet of information mm -hmm. to, uh, for example, a lamp mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then exactly. control a lamp. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have a lamp here um, in the room, uh, even though this isn't a lamp, but it's a similar mm -hmm. type of lamp that could be controlled. Mm -hmm. And on the lamp in the room, we see a, 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 mm -hmm. a manual switch. Mm -hmm. So this would replace that was the switch. Exactly. And also, I think it can be a great addition to like smart pass application with like smartphones. Like for example, you can buy uh, RF embedded light bulbs these days, sure. right? But those kind of products only gives you iPhone apps. But you know, I don't want my son to control the play with the, you know, my iPhone playing with the lights. So people also do need some kind of physical switch in their, their rooms. 
And with this integrated into those you know, systems, you, users can instantly have a physical light switch in addition to you know, iPhone apps. Well, great. Now, so Dr. Takahashi, um, what, where do you see this going next? Where do you see your next steps? So our next step is that we are working with some uh, switch manufacturers and lighting manufacturers to send this to a production. So that's where definitely why one direction we are going. And also, uh, we want to do a Kickstarter uh, sometime this year to sell. Uh, actually, we designed a beautiful light called the bonsai light for this CES. So we want to sell this bonsai light pair with this, uh, this you know, uh, nice switch. That, and then we are planning to do a Kickstarter for that Perfect. project. So. Well, great. Now, is there a website that our viewers could go to if they want to get more information? Yeah, so uh, the, for this project, it's uh, bonsailight.com, B-O-N-S-A-I light.com. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that sounds like a great place to go. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, do you have any more comments, Stuart? Um, I did, but I slipped my mind. Just like <laughs> well, Hopefully you can edit. Um, what was I going? I had a, oh, uh, another important point here is that what we've done uses a standard RF protocol. Mm -hmm. There's some other competitive systems out there that don't generate as much as electricity as we do in their unit, and they have to use a proprietary um, RF protocol, whereas we're using a standard Zigbee, and we also have in development a uh, more powerful unit that um, will work with Bluetooth. Wow, that's incredible. Well, I look forward to seeing these advances. And this is like an incredible product. Uh, now, I'll be writing an article about this in, in our CE magazine, as we know, the Con Consumer Electronics Society in our magazine would like to promote new technologies and mm -hmm. especially innovators like yourselves. So we'll be writing an article with this. We want to say a special thanks to Charbucks for doing our video. And of course, the Charbucks uh, channel is an amazing with some uh, new innovations and products and I think it's been a wonderful time. Thanks so much Dr. Hatashi. Thank you. And thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.